Uh, how you doing? Uh, my name is Franny Drummond from Drummond Custom Airbrush. Um, I am making this uh, helmet for you guys. Um, we are um, doing it for Hockey Us. Um, just a little bit about the helmet. Um, it is a Bauer helmet. Um, it is for uh, one of the players from Grundy's Senators. Um, little guy actually, nine years old. Um, we actually started painting this helmet already, um, as you can see. We still got to do some outlining and, and different things, but we, his favorite goalie is um, Flurry from the Penguins. Um, so what I'm going to show you right now is we actually painted these stars on here, and we are about to tape out um, around the stars to just add like a little shadow. So I'm going to do that now. And when doing this, um, obviously, it, we use all automotive paint. Um, we use PPG products. Um, and what's nice about automotive paint is the durability and how quick you can tape out on it, um, which is good. You know what I'm going to do? I'll tape out um, one star and I'll airbrush around it so you can kind of get an effect. I added a little silver mini flake to try to bring it out once we clear this thing. Because um, you can see it from a distance. A lot of goalies um, are very specific with what kind of design they want. Um, some are a little superstitious. Some guys like to have their name on the chin. Um, a lot of guys, um, you know, like some of the NHL guys like to have their kids' names on the back, which is pretty, pretty nice. So basically I'm just taping around the star right now because um, I want a little border all the way around the edge. I'm just cutting back the actual lines just to get the paint of the star. I want to tape this star out so that way we don't get the shadow on this star. We're coming up with this design. He's got um, the stars that we kind of came up with that we thought we'd, we're going to put the, the number one is his number on the front chin. A lot of guys like to put their name or whatever, um, you know, if they have a nickname. We just did one guy's, uh, a young kid, his name was Spike. We kind of put his nickname on the on the bottom. A lot of this stuff right now is um, just taping and prep work. And it's funny you do a lot of this prep work and then airbrushing it is is uh, takes like two minutes. It's all in the actual prep and the design where all your time comes in. But I'll show you kind of what we're gonna do. When you're doing this, a lot of this stuff here that we're doing is a lot of um, the technique and um, when taping obviously um, you have to really be careful of like putting tape on other designs that's why I like to use um, automotive paint because I know it's super durable and I won't have any problems with lifting other paint up um, but right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna airbrush a shadow around the edge of this so that way when we pull this green tape off you you know, we'll have that red still there, which is going to be a cool effect around the star. Just to add another effect or technique, like the glitter, or, um, you know, later on we'll, we'll airbrush the guy to make him, you know, spice him up a little bit. But what I'm going to do is um, use the airbrush with some black paint and just airbrush right around the edge of the tape. And we don't want to go too heavy because we, we want it to be kind of like a shadow around the edge. Um, just to kind of give it a, a, a another look. And I'm not taping out here on the black because I'm spraying black, so it's just going to disappear anyway. But when you're spraying this stuff, you got to be careful. Um, you don't want it to go too crazy with it because then you'll muddy the whole entire paint job up. You just want to accent the, the edges of uh, the tape. Kind of gives it another effect because there's so much red here you want to be able to add to the design a little bit
and it's different if you uh, if you do a portrait or um, that takes more time when you do portraits or like the flurry on the other side we you know we took a decent amount of time a couple hours to airbrush them um, because portraits it you know this is only a star but you got to make the portrait look like the portrait um, you know and, and a lot of these helmets nowadays um, they're getting kind of busy so some of the helmets you try to uh, basically limit what you're going to put on them because some of the kids come in and they want a lot of different stuff on them so what we try to do is limit what you can see um, by design um, from a distance because you know you don't want to not know what's going on on a helmet especially from a distance. I mean, it's not bad when you're sitting up close to them, but but being from a distance, you kind of want to see what's going on. Some of the NHL helmets are getting real clever um, with some of the designs. They're getting very cartoony because, you know, obviously cartoons you can see from a distance. But what we did was we just airbrushed around the edge. What I'm going to do now is just pull off the, the edge and show you kind of what we did. But now it looks like we have, you know, the star, the black, and the red, and then the shadow. Kind of makes it look a little bit cooler. But you learn techniques as you go. The more you paint, um, the more you, th you, you, you can kind of see what's out there. And, and you, you know, I look through a lot of magazines. I look through a lot of, uh, um, you know, hockey books or watch hockey videos or even NHL. You pick up a lot of cool ideas off what those guys are doing on their, on their masks. And you're like, oh, that's a really nice idea, but you can do it your own way um, and come up with your own technique. It's more of like a, a process of just learning as you go, but you can kind of see the design. And then we'll just go around and do all the stars. Everything's so raw right now. Like, like this guy was bothering me a little bit, so I want to spice him up a little bit. So I'll kind of show you how to do that. What I'll do now is I, I put brown um, mixed with a little bit of uh, candy. When well, candy is a, a transparent color, so this is going to kind of come out transparent -y because I would just want to really just accent his face and shadow it. So, um, and, and basically, I have like hardly any pressure coming out of here. Um, so I'm just going to kind of airbrush around the bottom of the chin to try to give him a little kind of shadow, kind of. Spice them up a little bit. Make a little, make them a little bit more uh, exciting to look at from a distance. Sometimes the flat, you know, it's good to have that on like your jersey, but you know, you have the ac access of doing it with a, uh, you know, airbrush or art. You might as well spice it up. And all I'm doing is just kind of going around and just airbrush and shadows from the from the helmet so I kind of pick an area of where my light source is coming from so if it's coming down here obviously it's going to hit the top edge of the helmet and the shadow is going to be on this edge um, you got to kind of pick where your light source is going to be when you do this so that way you have all the shadowing the same all the way through the whole job so I'm just kind of airbrushing the brown in right now. This brown, I, yeah, you try to use the same tones as the color below it. Um, but black's always like the shadow thing, but sometimes black likes to muddy up a, a paint job. So I don't use black too much unless I'm doing like around um, a lot of the red and, and things like that. Black's not bad for doing goalie helmets because um, most of the people that see these kind of paint jobs are going to be from a distance. Um, it's not like, because we do a lot of motorcycles and stuff, it's not going to be like right up on you. So we're just kind of drop a little bit of, you know, so now you can kind of see like he's got a little bit of meanness to him from a distance there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to load some black in here and then we'll black with a little bit of uh, gray. But now I'm just going to kind of go around and just use my same light source thing and just shadow in and out of here on the glove things like that up around this area here underneath 
anywhere the light source is coming from, you kind of got to map it out. And it's just experience from doing it a little while. You kind of get used to it of knowing where the light should come from. And what's the good thing about art is you can kind of make up anything you want. You can also use the excuse of if you mess up, it was supposed to be like that. And it's kind of like a simple process by just adding some shadows and highlights. And We've noticed as we were doing this, a lot of stuff is getting a lot more bubbly. And what I mean by bubbly is very, like, it's kind of like this. Oh, it's kind of got that whole bubble like style to it. And it's kind of neat. Um, it's cool from a distance. Um, let me kind of see. And all this is is just like a little bit of dark gray and uh, black mixed real like reduced. But you notice that I'm kind of keeping the shadow on that back end because my light source is coming from this way. So you kind of want, you know, the light source to kind of hit just the top edge of his shoulder. You got the top of the stick. And we're adding the shadow on the bottom there. And you're starting to see that it's kind of looking a lot more realistic than it was for a cartoon. Sometimes if you add too many effects, it kind of takes away from the, the paint job. You got to know your limits, but you'll learn as you go the limits that you can kind of take. Because there's a couple times that we're like, we'll do a paint job and we'll be like, oh, that's just a little bit too much and we'll go back in and fix it. Um, we're real picky. <laughs> How do we fix it? Um, a lot of times you can just kind of go back in uh, when you when, say I didn't really like that. We'll just go back in um, and I didn't really like this the way the shadow came out. I can kind of go back in, tape this back out and spray gray back in and then go that way. So you can paint on top of paint um, and they just call it layering. Um, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm kind of layering the paint. Um, but what's nice about the automotive paint that I keep going back to is um, I can put tape on this and not have to worry, you know what I mean? We can go, I use blue tape, um, the regular tape. Uh, blue tape's a little bit less aggressive, um, just in case, but um, you can use any automotive tape you want um, to kind of tape it out. Because there's a lot of, this one's pretty graphic, so, um, and another paint job will do for you. You know, I'll show you the process of actually painting the guy because there's a lot of stenciling and spraying it in and stenciling it. And then what I do is I take a brush and I go around and pinstripe around the whole entire um, outline. Kind of like a tattoo, you know, how guys outline tattoos. It's kind of the same, similar process. But we're just kind of still dropping our shadows in here. Um, with a reason about artwork, um, prep wise and paint um, like this this paint job in particular should take us roughly three four days um, with prepping it painting it clearing it and um, so I would say probably about a week um, with with everything going on uh, most of the time we try to give ourselves the leeway of a week just in case you're like uh, you know we didn't really you know we looked at and we painted the stars and we're like eh, we don't really weren't really feeling the stars maybe we'll change that and go a different route um which you which is nice because you can always go back in like i said and and sand and and touch up or or blend or add uh, which is pretty cool um that's why i do like using automotive you can also use that with uh if you don't have a, a place to like um to buy automotive paint or get you know with fumes and all that um we always wear a respirator i'm just not wearing a respirator so i can kind of talk to you guys but um, you always want to wear a respirator around this kind of paint. Um, with uh, I've used different paints. I've used you know Createx and different watercolor paints. Um, I just a lot of guys use them. I always used automotive because of the durability. Um, 
with the clear coats and everything that I use, everything is a whole entire system. So when I paint this particular helmet, I'm using the same product on the whole entire paint job. So when we do, we use PPG or there's House of Color or any kind of automotive paint that you want to use. When you do this, the nice part about it is use a whole system. Um, the flakes and different effects that you can use, um, that's, that's not that big of a deal because there's a lot of like Lundquist, the guy that does Lundquist uses a lot of the big heavy flakes and things like that. Uh, Van Beesbrook's helmet was done like that. Um, the durability is the key because obviously it is a hockey puck coming at you and you want to make sure it holds up. Um, but, but what I could do for you now is show you a little bit about the pinstriping. Um, and I'm going to outline the roof itself on the on the paint job here and um, you know I kind of have it drawn in real real light with pencil so that way um, you can kind of see it a lot of times I kind of lightly sketch things on there um, we've done different techniques as far as sketching or transferring like, like a tattoo um, with with different um, products that we use we, we use sometimes sometimes use this paper here which is a which is a, like a, a it's like a wax paper but it's not wax um, it's still it's like it basically transfers you know product onto a helmet um, and you can kind of wipe it off you know what I'm saying so what's nice about this is we can get it on there figure out where we're gonna lay it out on the design on the helmet and then we can you know lightly sketch it on there and then wipe everything off so that way this this residue isn't on, left on the helmet you want a nice clean surface all the time when you're painting because um, when you clear coat this thing and you polish it, um, you don't want any imperfections. Basically this paint is a pinstriping paint, um, but it's more for automotive. It is an automotive paint. There is uh, paints out there that are actually made um, with enamel. Um, I never use enamel paint because um, you know it's oil based. This is a urethane. Um, it is enamel, but it's a urethane enamel, so there is a difference. Um, what I do is I like to just mix it up in the can, bring you know, put it on my little palette here. Um, you can do this a couple different ways. I like to actually hand pinstripe it. Um, a lot of guys don't know how to do hand pinstriping. It's a technique you got to try to work with or outlining. Um, some may call it. Um, I like it because it's a little bit quicker and it gets to the point. So what I'm going to do is it looks like he's got little, um, like kind of, um, you know, little circles here for the, um, you know, the actual top of the roof. So what I'm going to do is just go back in with black. Everything's black. Um, and I'll just go back in and just kind of like put them in. It's kind of small, so it's probably hard to see, but I'll, uh, turn the helmet up so you can kind of see it. So I like to try to work from top to bottom because the paint's kind of wet. So you want to be able to kind of just take it and just like you're pulling a line across. And you're just kind of outlining the top of the roof there. And then like basically just doing the top edge of the roof. Now with helmets are a little different than like a motorcycle tank where you know, the motorcycle is round, but there's a lot of holes and a lot of little valleys that you kind of got to work your brush in and out of, which is a whole different thing. Because what happens is your brush wants to go close to it and actually spread out. So what you got to do is kind of adjust your hand. And you can go back over top like I'm doing now go back over top of it and kind of make your line a little straighter if you have to because it is a little difficult um, but the roof is red so we kept the red of the helmet and we're going to do the same effect around the outside like we did on the stars so it's going to have that nice black glow to just kind of bring the whole logo out but still keep the red of the helmet so what we're kind of doing here is these shingles on top of the roof here um, are staying red so we're just kind of put those lines in there just to indicate where they're at and you know right now putting this um, in this spot isn't the best location but it looks cool so we got to kind of 
try to find a spot for it. And you don't realize that from a distance how hard this stuff can be, but that's kind of why we're doing this video here so you can kind of see how much actually gets done on these helmets and how involved it is to, to do. And some designs are a little easier than others. Um, this one here, this logo has a lot of lines to it, so it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to, to outline. And you're always, I don't care what helmet you're using, you're always going to have to go through the, the ups and downs of the actual helmet itself. But So basically I'll show you kind of a little bit about this. I just outlined it. Um, I'll outline the bottom here, but I'll throw in these uh, shingles for you. I guess we can call them shingles. And it's more just trying to keep a nice consistent line. Um, and like I said, it's, it's more practice. And the, bl the black is actually pretty opaque, so you don't have to keep going over top of it. It, it covers really, really nice. You kind of just outline the, the whole out edge of it. You know, just follow your lines like paint by number kind of thing. Which sounds really easy, but... Yeah, I wish it was that simple. <laughs> you know, it sounds really easy, but once you do it... You gotta have a steady hand, definitely. But once once you get the hang of it, you do it. And, and I can d drop little shadows on little shingles and that kind of stuff too. And everything on, on these helmets are pretty much like layering process. So um, if I wanted to add a little bit, you know, if I wanted to go back in here and make these sh shingles purple, I can go back in there, tape each one of these out, which is gonna be a pain, but you know, go ahead and airbrush purple shingles if I wanted to. Um, you can always go back in and fix it. And a lot of times, once I clear coat this and I see something that I don't like, I can actually sand the clear coat. And and uh, I usually use like 800 when I sand clear coat and then do artwork on it, or 600 uh, gives a little bit more grit. Um, and I'll explain to you once I prep these things how we use. So, but you get the point of, of how I'm doing the shingles and kind of following the guideline of what's on, on that. Okay, that's, that's it for today. Um, the different techniques are a are, are process. Um, so what we're going to do in these new videos here is we're going to show you the process from start to finish um, of actually doing, this one's more cartoony. But I think, you know, with each video that we do, we'll do like more of like show you how to do more of a realistic piece like this or do basic lettering, um, how we use the machine to cut lettering out. Um, or we're going to use like this one is all hand done. So we actually cut it out onto the thing, um, onto the helmet itself. So we'll, we'll, we'll show you different techniques um, that we use to do um, these kind of helmets.